Hi everybody, today we're going to do an introduction to the normal distribution. I'll also talk about the empirical rule for the normal distribution and show you a quick example. A normal distribution is a continuous distribution. This means we are concerned with the probability that data falls within a given interval. We aren't looking at individual data values. Some properties of normal distributions that you want to get familiar with include that the area under the curve is always equal to one. The mean, the median, and the mode are all equal and are the highest value of our curve. The curve is symmetric to the mean, so half of the data will be on the right, half of the data will be on the left. Lastly, the curve follows the empirical rule that we'll look at a little closer in just a minute. But let's first take a look at the curve and how it changes with different values. The center of the distribution is determined by the mean. The width of the distribution is controlled by the standard deviation. The greater the standard deviation, the wider the distribution. Let's take a quick look. I'm starting with a normal distribution that has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. If I make the standard deviation larger, we see that the distribution gets wider. If I decrease the size of the standard deviation, you'll see I get a more narrow distribution. When I change the value of the mean, I can see that the position of the mean moves. This then moves the center of the graph. As we continue to talk about normal distributions, we'll talk about how to graph the normal distribution using technology. But for now, we're just looking at a quick introduction. All normal distributions follow the empirical rule. It says approximately 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean. Approximately 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. Lastly, approximately 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. It looks like this. I have my standard normal curve with my mean in the center. One standard deviation is one to the right, one to the left, and that stands for 68% of the data. When I look at the 68%, I want you to remember the symmetry of the graph. We have 34% on the left and 34% on the right, which makes our total of 68%. When I look at two standard deviations, I'm supposed to have 95% of the data. Since I already have 68% of the distribution, I need to find what percent is added when I go from one standard deviation to two. When I subtract 68% from 95%, I get 27%. But remember, we're going to split this in two. That will add 13.5% to the right and to the left. We have 5% remaining, which belong in the two tail regions of the graph. So far, far on the right and far, far on the left. Remember, we're dividing by 2. 5% divided by 2 gives me 2.5% on the right and 2.5% on the left. Let's do a quick problem that uses the empirical rule. The time it takes to bake a cake is normally distributed with a mean of 32 minutes and a standard deviation of 2 minutes. We're going to use this information to answer a few questions. Before we start answering the questions, let's label our graph. I'll start by placing the mean on the graph. Remember that the mean will always be the center and the highest point we see. We have a mean of 32 and a standard deviation of 2. If I add 32 plus 2, that tells me my first standard deviation is at 34. If I add another 2 to get my second standard deviation, I'm at 36. Let's repeat that on the left. 32 minus 2 gives me 30. Then I subtract another 2, which gives me 28. Now we're ready to answer some questions. Let's find the percent of cakes that take between 30 and 32 minutes. I can locate the 30 and the 32 on my graph, which tells me I expect 34% of the cakes to be completed in this time period. Next, let's find the percent of the cakes that take less than 34 minutes to bake. When I look at the 34, I can see between the mean of 32 and the time of 34, 34% of the cakes take this amount of time. Then anything less than 32 represents 50% of the data. I have two numbers to add, the 50% that's less than 32 and the 34% that's between 32 and 34. 50% plus 34% gives me a total of 84%.
Our last problem says find the percent of cakes that take between 28 and 34 minutes to bake. Looking at 28 and going over to 34, I see three numbers. I have 13.5%, 34%, and 34%. When I add those three together, I get 81.5%. I hope this video shows you the importance of drawing out the normal distribution in order to use the empirical rule to answer questions.